Hi everybody, welcome to Game In Your Pocket. Today I'll take a look at Galdor's grip. You are Galdor, a psychic that many years ago battled and defeated an ancient evil. And that evil is now locked in your mind. But a demented telepath has attacked your mind with the intention of unlocking the evil once again. Of course, you cannot let that happen. So there is a battle inside your mind and your head. And the battle is fought using these 18 cards. As usual, I look at three different aspects. Is the game pocket sized? In this case, absolutely. Is it affordable? Yes, as print and play. And it's actually free, but I highly recommend to use the free option to tip the designer. Finally, it's very fast to set up and play and the game is played entirely in your hand. The game is all about exploration. You have to explore the different cards and when you encounter them, something will happen. Sometimes it's good and will unlock stars and sometimes it's bad and you will potentially lose the game. What you're looking for is Galdor's grip. You have to find four binding stones and then Galdor's grip, the card, and you will win the game if you have stars enough. Stars can be found on the different cards. Sometimes you have to rotate them, put different cards adjacent to each other, or make other card combinations to earn stars. What you're looking for to win the game is nine stars. This is a printer-friendly version of the game. You can also print a version with a picture of Galdor himself on the back. As I mentioned, all the cards have their backside up when you begin, and then you explore the first card. In this case, it's a binding stone. So when you look at a card, you look in the top left corner to see a value here. This value tells you how many cards you can count and move to the bottom of the deck. On this card, there's also a rotation symbol, so you can rotate the card and get a different value, in this case, three instead. That's your choice. Then there is a description, and in this case, the description tells you that if this card has the same value as an adjacent card, you will gain one star. So far, this is the only card we have, but this is where the exploration phase comes in. Of course, you will turn cards over as you progress through the game. You can position the cards and you can count your way and see how many combinations you can make and of course avoid the dangerous cards. With a value of four, you will count four cards and move them to the bottom of the deck. And the card you encounter next will be your active card. If it's revealed, you will resolve the card, otherwise you'll reveal it. Sometimes there are cards you would like to avoid and that's where you can rotate the encounter card and use another value instead. Another option you have is to use the value of the second card behind your encounter card. In this case there is no card but when you have revealed several cards, maybe all of them, you will have different values to choose from. If you finish the game with less than nine stars, you will lose. Other ways to lose is, for example, to encounter a figment of Farragut. First time you see this card, nothing will happen. You'll just have to rotate it. And then it's actually a good card because it will earn you one star. But if you encounter this card a second time, you will have to rotate it again and that will end the game and you will lose no matter how many stars you have. That's definitely not all, but it is the basics of the game. So let's just set up the game and play. So you shuffle the 18 cards, all of them with the backside up, and then you're ready to go for your first game of Galdor's Grip. So when you begin, you will just encounter the very first card on top of the deck. And in this case, we will encounter Deep Root Depth. It's a card with two different values. You can rotate it if you want to. And the special thing about this card is that it will trigger when you move it to the bottom of the deck. Then you can rotate any other card moving with this one as well. So we'll count three cards and then I can put this one anywhere I want to with the cards I move to the bottom. So let's encounter the next one. And it's a binding stone. That's good. We need the binding stones. The East binding stone here has a value of two or five 
and all the binding stones will earn you stars if you put them adjacent to a card with the same value. I'll just count two cards and move them to the bottom and then I'll encounter my first figment of Farragut. And if the card was face up, I would have to rotate it, but it's not. So I'll count five cards and I will put the figment of Farragut in between the five cards. Then I will encounter the next one and it's another binding stone. Wow, two binding stones already. This one with a value of three or four, I'll just count three. And then there is another binding stone that's incredible. Maybe I'll get the binding stones too fast. I'll use the value of one because it's good to explore the cards here in the beginning of the game. And then I will reveal Belgrin's beard. If this card moves to the bottom of the deck with other cards with a value of 13 or higher, I'll get a star, but that's not possible now. I will count three cards and encounter a new one. And here we have Galdor's Grip. That's very early in the game to have three binding stones and Galdor's Grip. You'll need all four binding stones before something happens with this card. So, so far, nothing will happen. The value in the top left corner of this card is special. This symbol means that you can choose a value between one and six. So it's a good card to have. I can decide the value I want. And now I have more explored cards already. So if I want to encounter one of these cards again, I can. And I can also try to avoid them. I'll pick a value of three and then I will explore this card. <laughs> It's the fourth binding stone. I really didn't plan this. Now I have all four binding stones. Let's find the Galdor's Grip card again. No matter where Galdor's Grip is in the deck, I will immediately have to rotate it when I have found all four binding stones. And the next time I encounter Galdor's Grip, I will win if I have nine stars or lose if I don't. The binding stone here has a value of four or three, but I can also use the value of the next card to explore if I want to. And the task here is really to get the binding stone next to another card with an adjacent value. So far I'll count four cards and that will give me a new card. When this card moves to the bottom of the deck, I can rearrange not only this card, but all the other cards moving along with it. That could be these five cards but I would like to explore a little more. So I'll rotate the card and that will give me a value of two. So I'll count two cards and then I will rotate this one. It's a figment of Farragut. Well, it has a value of one. So I'll rotate the next one. And here we have Farragut's Fortress. Somehow this card is good because it allows me to peek anywhere in the deck where there is an unrevealed card. But it's also a way to lose the game if all the cards are revealed. So I could use the value of three of the next card and then I could peek at this card. It's a frenzied flame. So now I can decide, do I want to encounter this card or do I want to avoid it? I think I'll use the value of the second card and count three. I'll just position Farragut's Fortress here and then I will encounter frenzied flame. When this card is on top of the deck, as it is now, I have to rotate it and then I have earned a star. That's good, but I also have to end the turn immediately. That's always dangerous because it makes me lose control and put it somewhere in the deck. So I have the North Binding Stone. I can use a value of one or six or three if I use the second card. You can rotate the first card and still use the value of the second one if you want to. But in this case, I will use the value three and then I have the beast's sanctum. If at the end of the game, the deck contains exactly three cards with a value of six, I will earn two stars. I will definitely have to trigger that. So I'll have to rotate the North Binding Stone. And I know that Farragut's Fortress also has a value of six. Anywhere you want to, you can always look through the deck with the revealed cards and see what you have and where the cards are positioned. I will count to six and then I have Deep Root Death. So I can rotate any of the cards moving to the bottom of the deck and I will rotate this Binding Stone. And we have a new 
encounter. And it's another figment of Farragut with a value of two, so I will count two cards. And here we have Maleficent Mace again. If I only explore two cards, I will encounter a figment of Farragut for the second time. Of course, I could rotate the card here and get a value of 5, but for the sake of this playthrough, I will do this, because the second time I meet a figment of Farragut, it will rotate and it will earn me one star. In a regular game, I probably wouldn't have done that, but let's just get this game going. Now I have several choices. I could use the value of 3 and encounter the Frenzied Flame again. I could use 4. I could also use the 1 value of Farragut's Fortress. I think I will use 4 as my value. And yeah, that will give me Belgran Spirit again with a value of 3. And I will explore 3 cards and rotate another figment of Farragut. Farragut is the telepath trying to attack you, and the figments are his weapons. I can use the value 4 of the figment, or I could use 3 of Deep Root Deaths. I will do that. That will give me... Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, let's do that. That will give me a Binding Stone, and then I will use 3 just to get another figment of Farragut, because that will earn me another star. I'm going fast through the game now. It's not a wise decision, but it will earn me a lot of stars fast. And the same with this one. Let's get some stars and then count five. If I use the value of the second card two here, I will get a figment of Farragut for the third time and I will immediately lose. So that's not an option. So five it is, and I will put the figment here, and then it will give me a new card to explore, and the Veiled Stair appears. And this card gives me a star. If somewhere in the deck there are three cards with ascending or descending sequential order. Let's see if we have that somewhere. Yeah, we have that here, two, three, four. So if these cards are in the same order at the end of the game, I will earn a star. So I will count two cards and I once again will encounter Balgrin's Beard. And somehow I would like to rotate the North Binding Stone to get a value of six instead. So if I use the one value and get the North Binding Stone as my encounter card, I can rotate it and then count six cards. So let's see if that is a good idea. I want to rotate the card because of the Beast Sanctum ability here. And I'll think I'll put it here. And then I will count another six cards. And that's... Yeah, I'll just have to check if some of the cards have abilities that I can use. This is a game where you have to be aware of the card special abilities because they will most often benefit you. The ones that make you lose the game are not so easily overlooked. Let's try to get some stars. I would like to rotate Farragut's Fortress, so I will use the value 1 of the card. And I think there are unrevealed cards, yeah, and I can also count 6. So I'll use the value 1 and then just put the top card at the bottom of the deck. And then I will rotate Farragut's Fortress with a value of 6. I have to first reveal and peek at a card. Mm, and it's a figment here. That's fine. So I'll count 6 cards. And well, here we have Galdor's Grip. That will trigger the end of the game. I can avoid Galdor's Grip, and I would have done so if I just played a normal game. But as an example now, I will say, well, fine, give me Galdor's Grip. It's the end of the game, and let's see how many stars I have. Let's count. First, we'll get Galdor's Grip out of the way. Then I have a figment here. It will not earn me any points, but it's a part of a sequential order. So that's one star, two, three, four. Sadly, this Binding Stone is not next to any 
other, but this one is. So that will give me a second star. And they also have a value of six. Then this figment will give me the third star. No, nothing here. The star number four and five. And then we have the third card with a value of six. That will give me two stars of the Beast Sanctum and one more for the Frenzied Flame. That will be a total of eight stars. Not bad, but of course it's not enough to win the game. It was a fast game to show you some of the mechanics of Galdor's Grip. If I had put more effort and thought into it, I might have scored extra stars. I don't know. And I could, of course, also have lost the game. There is a balance between keeping the game going and exploring and finally run into a card you just cannot avoid. And then stars won't help you. And I can see some of the things I could have done. I also have unexplored cards in the deck. Maybe some of them would have helped me. Yeah, eight stars is not bad, considering that this was a very fast game. It's possible to score up to 15 stars in the base game, so why stop with nine? Why not try with 12 or maybe 15 as the ultimate challenge? That's also a way to adjust the difficulty of Galdor's grip. And speaking of base game, there are 12 out of the 18 cards that are essential and you have to play with them, but there are also six non-essential cards. And already now there are three expansions that you can mix and match with the non-essential cards. Three different expansions, you can use one of them completely, you can mix them with the cards from the base game or you can mix all the expansion cards together. The rules give you advice of how to adjust the difficulty and how to mix the expansion cards with the base game. That gives a lot of variety. Galdor's Grip is designed by Greg Duell, and I must say this is very close to the ultimate game in your pocket. You can play this game anywhere, in your break, in the bus, and while you're making a great dinner for your family and just have a few minutes before the pasta is al dente. You can leave the game, walk away, come back later and pick up just where you left. I highly recommend to check out Galdor's Grip. There's a lot of strategy, replay value, variety, everything. I'll put the links in the description to get this game. So what are you waiting for? Thanks a lot for watching this game in your pocket. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel and I hope you'll join me for future videos.